Okay, this is a tutorial to show a couple of basic ways to set up a paperback book cover in InDesign. Okay, so for this method, I've got my new document window open. I've selected just an A5 template just to get a rough paperback size. It's not really important, it's whatever the size of your page is. And remembering for a paperback cover, you don't require any additional special bleed or settings or anything like that. The size of your cover is basically the size of your page for your document. So if you had A5 size pages, you'd have an A5 size cover. So anyway, um, I just want to quickly go over the settings here for, because there's one important thing that needs to be noted here, and that is your margins. Okay, these are just the guidelines that are on the page. They're not terribly important, but just to make life a little bit easier for yourself, you want to actually make these zero. Ordinarily, you wouldn't do this, but I'll explain why in a moment. So we'll create our new document. Okay, we're in our new document. Now, the method that we're using first here is a useful method that allows you to make adjustments to the width of the spine on your book if you have to after it's been laid out. It's not ideal to have to do this, but sometimes it does happen. You might have a book that's been laid out and needs to be reprinted and, for example, the page count might have changed because it's a new edition, or your printer might actually require you to change the width slightly because the stock that they're printing on is slightly different from the last time they printed it. So it's not so much an issue initially when you're first setting up a book, but if it's a book that you ever need to reprint, this could be a handy way of doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create three separate pages in InDesign. Now these three pages actually represent the three sections of our cover. So the first page is actually the back cover, the second page is actually the spine, and the third page is the front cover. It'll all make sense in a second. So what you need to do is go in and turn off Allow Document Pages to Shuffle. This is a global setting for all document pages. Then you're also going to need to go in and just uncheck Allow Selected Spread to Shuffle for each of your pages, which is technically a spread because that's just, yeah. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we can do is we can rearrange these pages manually. So we can take the second page, move it up and drop it right next to the first page, which will actually physically place it on the pasteboard right next to it. And you can see which direction these pages are gonna face and where they're going to place in sequence by the little arrow next to the cursor there. Okay, so there's one. Do the same with the front cover. And now we have three pages side by side. Okay, so for the center page, this is our spine. It's actually very easy to make this the correct width. So you select this page, you then go to your page tool, and then up here in the width box, what you can do is simply change this to whatever the measurement you've got from your printer. It's important to remember too, if you haven't done a lot of book covers before, the width of your spine is specified by your printer. So you'll need to actually contact them. They'll need the page count for the document and you know, they'll need to basically provide you with the width of the spine. It's not something that you can figure out yourself or guess. So in this case, let's say for argument's sake, our printer told us that you know, it was a 12 millimeter spine. So we just enter that in when we hit enter we have a 12 millimeter page. Now this is the reason why we turned off the margins. And just so that you can understand why, I'll demonstrate what happens if you leave a normal sort of page margin on there. A normal page margin is about 12 millimeters on its own anyway. So if you leave the default margin in there, here's what'll happen if you try to change your page size. You'll receive an error because the margins are actually now too wide for the width of your page that you're trying to change it to. So that was why we have our page margin set initially to zero. I mean, they don't have to be zero. You could just set them to two or three millimeters and it'd be fine, but we don't really need them. So, and we can also change them after the fact anyway. So back up here, making sure we have our center page selected for our spine, 12 millimeters, and then just use the page tool, which does work with the shift key. You can constrain it by holding down shift so that it will move in a straight line and just have it snap to the edge of the page next to it. Then do the same for the cover. 
And this method is kind of unorthodox, but it does work quite reliably. What you now have is three separate pages. You have your back cover, your front cover, and your spine, and they're all the correct dimensions. So you don't have to work out a single page that's the correct width for the three different measurements that you have. And what it means is if you need to resize the spine of your book later on for you know, the reasons that I mentioned earlier, all you need to do is select that page, go back into your page panel and change it. Let's say we have extra pages in the second edition and it's now 15 millimeter spine. There you go, your page is now the correct size. And if you just go and click on these other pages, they'll snap back to the edge. And it's that simple, which means that you can keep your front and your back covers as separate pages without any pieces hanging over. And you can keep your spine as a separate element. And if you need to revise this and resize it later on, you can. It also means that you can produce the cover as a mock-up before you actually have the spine width from the printer. You can just take your best guess and then when you have your correct width from the printer you can come back into your file and resize it with a minimum hassle. There is one thing to bear in mind using this method and that is when you export your file you need to make sure to export your document as spreads not as separate pages because what you're wanting InDesign to do is to actually take these three pages and combine them into one so that your PDF will have just the single page for your cover design in it. It means that you will end up with your bleed and your crop marks in the correct places and the file will be completely press ready. So even though this method is slightly unorthodox, it is still quite reliable and it gives you a little bit of flexibility if you need to revisit these files later on. Okay, so that's one method. Another way of laying out a book cover, if you want to be a bit more traditional, is to just do it all as a single page. Um, this can be a bit safer if you have to get, hand the file off to somebody else and they're not going to understand why you've made three different sized pages for your cover. Um, this one looks a little bit neater, but honestly it doesn't make much difference in the output. Okay, so to do it this way, I've got my standard A5 page open here. This is the size of our book page. And we just simply go to the page tool like so. We need to have a front and a back cover, so we just go... 148 millimeters multiplied by 2 and there is our front and our back cover. Now this doesn't include the spine. Obviously the spine is always the tricky part when doing a book cover. So fortunately what we can do is simply go in here again and just do add and take let's say the 12 millimeters if that's what our printers told us the spine width is and add that on to our book cover. So now we have the proper dimensions for the entire cover laid flat. So what we need to do now is simply create some guides on the page so that we know what we're doing and we're putting everything in the right place. And this is pretty easy to do as well. You just simply go in margins and columns. And here we have number of columns. Now we've got our one frame here. It's basically a single column. What we need to do is just turn that into two columns. So now we have our front cover and our back cover. And for the width of our spine, we're just gonna use the gutter value. So we put our 12 millimeters in there hit OK and there we have our spine. It's centered on the document and yeah it's the correct width. So we can put our information for the spine in here, we can put our back cover in here, we can put our front cover in here and yeah we're basically done. This method isn't as good as the other method just simply because if you need to make any adjustments to the width of the spine you're gonna have to do a lot of manual shifting around. So you will need to for example increase the width of the total page but then you'll need to also move each corresponding front and back cover out to make it an or in, depending on whether you make the spine bigger or smaller, I suppose. Um, yeah, in order to accommodate the width of your spine. But apart from that, this is a very safe, very you know, reliable method of making a paperback cover. So that's all then. Hope this has been some help to somebody. And yeah, thanks for watching.